Senator Shaheen. Well, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Risch, and to all of our nominees today, thank you all very much for your willingness to continue to serve the country. Um, and congratulations on your nominations. I, I would like to address what are some underlying issues that um, sadly don't have anything to do with your nomination, but do have to do with what we need to do to ensure that we have ambassadors and representatives of the United States in place who can do the work of this country. And I am very disappointed that there is such a lack of trust on this committee that 500 days into the nominations of Mr. Liu, we finally get the information that is the concern that the minority has had. And I think those are serious allegations and they need to be investigated. And I would like to have done that 500 days ago. Um, and you don't need to respond, uh, Senator Risch. But I think this committee needs to get its act together so that we don't have hearings in the future where we're, so that we're first not holding up nominees for 200 plus days when we need you in the field. And secondly, that we're having a hearing like this where a lot of dirty laundry is being aired when we should be talking about the role that these uh, nominees are gonna play in the countries to which we hope you will serve. So um, I'm really disappointed in the behavior of the committee today and I hope that we are gonna fix that going forward. Now, Mr. Alou, um, recognizing that you haven't seen those um, letters um, accusing you, I, I will say that my office has received numerous enthusiastic recommendations uh, about your service and have commended your leadership um, and your management style and your character. So uh, I would like to therefore raise questions about Montenegro and the job that you hopefully will be going to serve. Um, I had the pleasure of visiting Montenegro um, in the la within the last year, and we met with President Milicovic at the Munich Security Conference. This is a country, as you point out, that's on the cusp of EU membership. Um, and I want you to, to talk to us a little bit about how we can support, how you would support Montenegro if you're confirmed as ambassador as they continue their accession talks with the EU. Senator Sheen, thank you so much, and thank you for your leadership, uh, and thank you for the, uh, the, the kind words. Um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't thank you for your leadership in Europe when I was chargé in Poland, and if I didn't thank Senator Risch and his team, for, because we worked very, very hard and, and protected media freedom in that country. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't men mention that. Thank you so much. Um, the first, if confirmed, what I would continue to do is, is ensure that Montenegro continues down its path towards EU succession. We have vibrant programs through our INL programming that the embassy is uh, implementing right now, uh, because right now Montenegro has, has opened 33 chapters of 35 for accession talks. They. Uh, closed three provisionally and they're working on two of the most important. The EU has put chapters 26 and 27, judicial reform and security reform. The EU has put conditions on Montenegro that they can't move forward if, if they don't close these chapters. So what we are doing and what the embassy is doing and I hope to continue and expand is provide both technical and capacity building assistance to the prosecutor's office, to uh, the special police, to combat corruption and um, <coughs> organized crime. Uh, they've done a mirac the new government has done a miraculous job in the 100 days that they have been in power. They have named judicial councils, uh, uh, filled vacant constitutional court uh, places. They've named a very competent and brave uh, Supreme State Prosecutor that uh, Mr. Markovic that is taking on crime and, and uh, prosecuting bad actors. We need to continue to help them. But we also need to continue to push on the EU, and if, if confirmed, I will do so, to make this accession process, process transparent and fair. Thank you, ma'am.
Thank you. I certainly agree with that on the EU. Um, in my brief time that I have left, Dr. Sfrega, given that NATO has welcomed the two new Arctic allies in Sweden and Finland, um, can you talk about how um, you would work with NATO partners if you're confirmed to ensure um, that we're all working together to deter Russian and Chinese aggression in the Arctic? Thank you, Senator, for the, for the question. We, we all do wait uh, patiently, but maybe with a good sense of urgency about Sweden's imminent ascension to, to NATO. Seven of the eight Arctic nations now members of the NATO. It intensifies and further coordinates and further strengthens the transatlantic alliance, because what we have created now is a transarctic alliance. And Sweden now is, is a big part of that, as is Finland, of course, and NATO. Uh, Ma'am, I would certainly work very closely with our European Bureau our NATO colleagues, and in Brussels. The job of this ambassadorship should be to inform and bring value to this discussion. The Arctic is unique, but it is globalized. And so now we have a region in the Arctic that is very much part of NATO's portfolio. And with the networks that an ambassador should have, that ambassador should be able to inform the process, inform interoperability, look at opportunities to strengthen this alliance, but needs to work very closely with our bilateral ambassadors in those countries, bring value to internal discussions, work appropriately with the Department of Defense, and think about ways in which we communicate what it is that we are doing. This is the most, this is the strongest defensive alliance the world has ever seen, and it has now grown because of actions from another country. These two countries, Finland and Sweden, bring to us capacities that we need, we welcome, they are friends, they are allies, they have unique capabilities in the North that can not only be used in the, their side of the North, but I would argue in the North American side of the North. There's an analog here. And so I would see this role to be connecting and to informing and to assisting in that process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Haggerty. 